Back when I was researching the material for hunting, gathering, and video games, I read lots of financial self-help books. And when it comes to what level of income makes somebody financially secure, I found that most financial, um, most financial advice experts offered variations on what I'm gonna call the four levels of enough. And the general rule is that these levels should be achieved in order, but I'll discuss that more in my next video. All right, the first level, that is level one, is having enough to cover all types of daily, monthly, and yearly expenses. Now by daily and monthly expenses, I mean those predictable regular expenses like rent and phone and utilities, uh, groceries, and so on. When it comes to yearly expenses, there's two categories. First category is predictable bills and expenses that come up throughout the year, like a biannual car insurance bill, um, a gym membership bill, uh, clothing expenses, uh, birthday expenses, Christmas expenses, or other holidays. Um, and the second category of the yearly expenses is irregular expenses that will probably come up throughout the year. Things like, um, uh, well, like repairs and replacements. All right, level one is the most complicated, so I'm gonna talk about it a bit more before I move on to level two. Now, the way I budget for level one may seem complicated, and maybe it is complicated at first, but once it's all set up, I find it makes uh, life a lot easier. So first, I organize my expenses into seven categories. Now, how many categories people should um, have is something very individual, and there aren't any set rules here. And I also have four children, so the budgets of childless people will probably look very different than mine. Anyway, my first category is monthly bills. Again, rent, phone, gas, electricity, etc. My second category is predictable yearly bills, like my biannual car insurance uh, and fees that come up every few months for my children's extracurricular activities. Uh, third category is an estimated amount for irregular yearly expenses, um, like repairs and replacements. Uh, fourth category is grocery expenses. Fifth category is birthdays and holiday gifts. Um, and sixth category is clothing. Now, once I have money set aside for these six categories of expenses, what's left over goes into my seventh account, which is discretionary spending, that is money for non-necessities, things like movies and takeouts. Now, in order to truly separate my money for each of these seven categories, what I did was open a separate savings account for each one. So when I get my paycheck, I transfer the budgeted amount into each account. So let's say my car um, insurance is $1,000 every six months. Uh, let's say my gym membership once a year is $600. Let's say I have a bills for music lessons and sports fees for my kids, and they, those add up to about $300 every two months. So I'll add up the yearly costs for all those, and that's $4,400 a year. So I take that $4,400 and divide it by the 24 paychecks that I get a year, and that's about $183 per paycheck that I have to set aside for yearly bills. Now I'm just gonna round it up to $200 um, because bills could always rise unexpectedly and I don't wanna be unprepared for that. Anyway, with my money organized like this, when those bills arrive, the money is there in my yearly bills account. Um, and also I, then I calculate the money I need for my other accounts in a similar kind of way. Now what's important about this seventh account, uh, which again is my discretionary spending account, the one that contains what's left over from my paycheck after all the other budget expenses are accounted for, is that this discretionary account lets me know when I can and when I cannot uh, spend money on non-necessities. Again, things like takeouts. So by having discretionary spending isolated in its own account, I won't be fooled by seeing that I have, well, let's say $3,000 or whatever in my other accounts um, that I think I can spend. Because that money is separated into their own accounts and I know the money is there reserved for pending expenses. Uh, maybe $1,500 is in my monthly bills account, but I know I can't touch it uh, because that's reserved for rent and other monthly bills. Maybe a couple hundred is in my gifts account, but I know I can't touch that because that's reserved for a pending birthday party next month, or it's also billed up toward a holiday gift account. Um, maybe $850 is my yearly bills account, but that's set aside for my pending biannual car insurance bill. And the fact, uh, in fact, that account maybe is still $150 short of the thousand that I'm gonna need for it, but because I know I'll get at least one more paycheck before the bill is due, I'm not worried about having enough. That is, as long as I know I can't use that money for anything else other than what it's reserved for. Um, so again, when my discretionary account goes down to zero, it doesn't matter how much I have in the other accounts, I still know I can't spend any money on non-necessities, at least until I get my next paycheck. All right, now there's a lot of variety when it comes to how you should go about setting up your budget and how many categories your budget needs and how much should be budgeted for each category. Um, when I searched the internet on how to budget, I got over 270,000 hits. 
Uh, so there are a lot of resources out there, out there that um, might help you find an approach that best suits your own personality and your personal circumstances. All right, everything I've said so far is only about what I'm calling level one of having enough. All right, so moving on to level two, which is making enough beyond level one to pay off your debts, things like credit cards and uh, college loans. Now, if you find it impossible to meet all your obligations for your monthly and your yearly expenses and to pay off debt too, that's a sign that you may want to see if you can simplify your life a little bit and cut back more on expenses. Um, or it's a sign that you need to get a job that pays more money. Um, but cutting back on expenses is something you might be more likely to be able to do right away. All right, now once you find that you can meet levels one and two of enough, the third level to strive for is to have an emergency fund uh, equal to about six months worth of living expenses. So if your monthly living expenses add up to say $2,000, uh, you should ideally strive to have an emergency fund equal to about $12,000. So if you follow a model similar to mine of having, say, sep seven separate savings accounts for what I'm calling level one, you would want an eighth account dedicated to reaching level three. And until you have that amount equal to about six months of living expenses, setting aside money from every paycheck for this account should be part of your level one budget, uh, whether it's $50 a pay period or even $10, $10 a pay period. All right, to be continued.